I love these mini printers. Sub $200 and they print awesome. But which one prints better? People keep asking me to do a runoff, so we're going to do a mini versus mini on today's Filament Friday. When I crossed the 10,000 subscriber mark, I decided I wanted to help give back to the community and start promoting some smaller channels that I like to watch that could maybe use a little boost. This week I want to mention DIY 3D Tech. He's a Michigan based YouTuber and I've actually met him at the Detroit Maker Fair. He's got both these printers, a Fabricator Mini and a Select Mini along with a DaVinci 1.0 and a Wanho. He also has a CNC machine and a laser cutter so we share a lot of interest. He recently did a, a print off between these two, printing a really small Eiffel Tower design. He got better results on a Select Mini than his Fabricator Mini, which was really interesting. The only thing I didn't like is he didn't use a fan to cool the filament on his Fabricator Mini because this doesn't come with a stock cooling fan. The Select Mini does. It, it diverts the air that's going to cool the hot end also down to cool the filament. So I wanted to print something that was kind of difficult on both these guys, but also put a fan on this guy so I get hopefully equal results. So let me show you what I printed and how well it turned out. My wife had asked me to print a tiny bird cage, so I found this one on Thingiverse from user DMarquee. I told her to go shopping at my filament rack and choose what filament she wanted me to use. She chose this copper colored PLA it's kind of a no brand that I bought at Micro Center a long time ago. It could be an eSun, it could be Inland, I really don't know. I imported the file into Simplify 3D and then I had to resize it to fit the dimension she wanted. She wanted a 38 millimeters in diameter and that made it 70 millimeters tall, which barely fit on a Fabricator Mini. So the next step was to select a Fabricator Mini profile, PLA, and 50% fill. I did four top and bottom layers and four perimeter shells. I did an infill 50%, no supports. Temperature I used 195 degrees on the Fabricator Mini and printed at 40 millimeters per second. So then I sliced it and this is the way it looked after slicing. And if I go through the steps here you can see how it's going to build. It's interesting to watch this. I don't see any gaps or nothing so I was ready to send to the Fabricator Mini. Now I needed to slice this for the Monoprice Select Mini. So I chose that profile in Simplify 3D, PLA, high print quality. Under the layer height, I originally did 0.1 then went back and did 0.2, four top and bottom layers, 50% fill, no support. Temperature here, this was a little different. I did a little bit higher temp, I got the heated bed, but I had a little higher temp for the Select Mini, 10 degrees higher. I found the E3DV6 style is a little more efficient than the monoprice one. Cooling I had 100% and then uh, for speed I did the exact same speed 40 millimeters per second. So that temperature difference is what I found just from experimenting so even though that's not exactly equal to me they were the same and this is how I get good prints out of the Select Mini. So once I sliced it I ran it through just a visual check I didn't see any gaps or anything so everything looked good just as I expected so now it was ready to send to the Select Mini. And here's the results side by side. The Fabricator Mini just looked a little cleaner than the Select Mini. Now both of them had some stringing. I blew that away with a hot air gun and this is what was left but the, the posts on the Fab Mini just looked a little smoother so I zoomed in with my USB microscope and I couldn't tell a major difference but when you look at it from the surface far away the Fab Mini looked a little smoother but they're both really good they both were great prints so there you have it two pretty equal prints although I will say I think the Fabricator Mini results were slightly better just a little bit smoother on the posts Although those close-ups don't really give you the full detail. When I put my finger over these guys, 
it's definitely smoother on the Fabricator Mini. Now just for an independent opinion, I gave them both to my wife and I said, which one do you want? Which one's better to you? And she clearly pointed out the Fabricator Mini one. She felt the Select Mini one was a little bit too rough and I didn't tell her which one it was printed on. I just gave her the two cages and said, which one do you want? Overall, I think they're pretty equal, but if you learn how to dial in the settings, I think you can make either one of these print just as good as the other. So to me, which one's better? This one has the bigger bed, a heated bed, so that's definitely an advantage. I love the heavy duty metal, but if you're traveling around, this lightweight little printer is very handy. And I love the E3D V6 style hot end versus what's on this guy. Many people have already changed this to an E3D V6. So there's a lot of extra parts you can print and convert yours. I also like the open source Marlin that's running on this. This firmware, I honestly don't know what it is. Now this has a 32-bit board in it, so this may have capabilities of doing more. But right now, they're about equal. So that's it for this week. I do want to mention I got some mail. I got this package from Eric Broxson. He's one of our my longer, in fact, I think he's my longest Patreon supporter. He sent me this little module. It's a voltage monitor module. He bought a bunch of these on eBay and he sent me one to play with. And I actually, I got something to use it on. I've been working on an Arduino breadboard module that the Arduino sits here, battery pack, breadboard, LCD, and I'm going to see if I can incorporate this guy in here so it can monitor the voltage that's on the rails. So, thanks Eric. I'm going to squeeze that into this project. I also got some filamentum PLA copper, and it's over here somewhere, still sealed. This is 80% copper filament, 80%. So I'm going to see how well this prints. I also got some from Virtual Foundry. Now this stuff is like twice the price of filamentum and it looks the same. This one's 88% copper versus 80%. So I don't know how much difference that makes, but the copper that I used on these two is really just a copper color. It's not true copper. These guys are true copper. So I'm looking forward to trying this out, but if filamentum works as good as this at half the price, this is the way to go. So. I'll show that in a future video. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe. And if you want a free sticker, fill them a Friday sticker, just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope at the address in the description. Also, my 10K celebration contest is finally here. You can win a Tarantula, TiVo Tarantula printer kit just by entering your email at the website, at the what you see down here, there should be an address, also be in the description. You just go to my website, enter your email address, and you're entered in the contest. Now, I could have done just all subscribers, but I just can't get a good list of people. And this way, it's only people who really want to try and win the, the printer. Now, also, I must warn you, I'm going to collect the emails, and I'm going to use it to just send out a newsletter. I'm not going to sell the email or anything like that but I am going to use it to let you guys know if something's coming what's going on with the channel it's a way for me to communicate back to my community beyond what I do with the patreon uh, crew I do a lot more with patreon let them know what's going behind the scenes blog posts occasional early videos things like that if you want to become a part of that a dollar a month to my patreon that's all I ask and to get you involved so that's it for this week I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you next time on filament Friday